faculty uh, and the student uh, to be student of DC, uh, DCNs actually. Warm welcome to you all. Uh, Aksha will be joining soon. Uh, in the meanwhile, actually, I'll just go ahead with the speech. So I don't want you to be late in the whole process. Uh, with the speech, I, I want to uh, be late in the game to organize Asha somehow. Uh, to with the speech, I, I, I want to be late in the game to organize Asha somehow. I want to be late in the game to organize Asha somehow. I want to be late in the game to organize Asha somehow. I want to be late in the game to organize Asha somehow. I want to be late in the game to organize Asha somehow. I want to be late in the game to organize Asha somehow. I want to be late in the game to organize Asha somehow. I want to be late in the game to organize Asha somehow. I want to be late in the game to organize Asha somehow. I want to be late in the game to organize Asha somehow. I want to be late in the game to organize Asha somehow. I want to be late in the game to organize Asha somehow. I want to be late in the game to organize and uh, last year we had uh, people like Shashi Tharoor, Jairam Ramesh. Uh, we had all kind of, uh, we had the education minister. We had uh, some of the best uh, entrepreneurs. We had some of the best professionals. And from the art design to other areas. So we had uh, a lot of people last year giving uh, uh, delivering speech for the joining students. Actually, just a few words about DC Smart before I uh, welcome you one more time. Actually, before I DC Smart institution, welcome you one more time. Comprises of DC Smart institution, welcome you one more time. Comprises of DC Smart institution, welcome you one more time. Comprises of DC Smart institution, welcome you one more time. Comprises of DC Smart institution, welcome you one more time. Comprises of DC Smart institution, welcome you one more time. Comprises of DC Smart institution, welcome you one more time. Comprises you people will feel that uh, what you know we have done uh, to protect the environment over there uh, so we have a 32 acre campus where we have many programs which includes a, a bachelor's in fashion technology Bachelors in Interior Design and Visual Arts, uh, Bachelors in Architecture, BR, uh, BCom, BBA, BBM, and uh, MBA for that matter, and BCA as well. So these are the programs you offer in uh, uh, Wagaman campus. Uh, and uh, the campus is quite unique, actually. It's probably the only residential campus in the entire Kerala, other than I would say IAM Code Code, actually. For, a, for any program as such, you know, it is a fully residential. There are uh, campuses with uh, hostels and accommodation, but we call it fully residential because we it's in true sense this is also a residential campus. Uh, hence, uh, we call it fully residential. It's a township of its own. You got mini supermarket to a medical uh, first aid to everything you can think about in a campus. Uh, so these are the two campuses uh, the programs are run and the students today are from both the campuses and from multiple programs um, again a warm welcome to all the students uh, uh, who has actually come for the program and uh, let me again uh, tell you that i mean this uh, the series of lectures actually please be a part of it actually this uh, you, you can acquire a lot of knowledge you can acquire uh, lot of, I mean, you can understand a lot of things from various walks of life, actually, be it design, be it knowledge, uh, be it profession, or be it anything, literally anything, actually. You'll be having a fashion designer from the uh, Bombay fashion design world, actually, probably be addressing you one of these days, or a social entrepreneur will be addressing you. So a lot of things are happening, actually, during this lecture series, actually. And this edition, uh, again, a warm welcome to all of you. And uh, on Giri Balasubdhamaniam, um, he is popularly known as a big brain or big giddy big brain Balasubramaniam. Uh, he has been a close associate of Jesus, Jesus Matt family for a long time. Um, um, he is the CEO and founder of Grey Crabs, one of, and he's one of the best quiz masters uh, I have known, actually. I think uh, he's probably, he is the best quiz master, actually. And he hails from Karnataka. Uh, he has done one of the, uh, we had a, we have a uh, quiz club called DZ Quizzy, uh, uh, DZ Quiz Club actually rather. And uh, 
it has actually it has evolved under the guidance of Sri Giri Bala Subramaniam. And let me welcome uh, Giri one more time actually to the uh, this audience. Actually, thank you, and uh, it's great to reconnect back after a while. And uh, I'm, I'm sure you people are going to enjoy uh, his session. And um, with this, I'll hand over the uh, mic to back to Rino. Uh, and uh, Rino, I hope Asha is there actually. And yes, sir. If Asha is there. I request to the yeah, yeah. please. Thank you, Asha. Thank you. We are looking for you, and we are waiting for you actually. Asha, you could just do a quick welcome, actually. That's yeah, right. yeah. Okay. Respected uh, Revi DC, our chief facilitator, our uh, invited guest, uh, Mr. Giri Balasubramaniam, other members of DC uh, family, our uh, present uh, students in all the courses in the Bhagavan campus and Trivandrum campus, our very dear new students uh, into uh, BARC, MBA, and UG, and other invited guests. Uh, a very good evening to you all. Listening to real passionate educated educators who care for the young generation is really great. And in this present scenario, all the more, we want to assure you children that you're all going to be fine with our guidance and perseverance, provided you need to uh, listen to us and then ready for a change. And that's precisely we are going to try with you all not to get worried about the present scenario. DCS Math Institute have decided to have a series of talks by people from various walks of life. And today, June 2nd, is our very first day. And Giri, we are so happy to have you in our midst. And in fact, our association goes back from 2006. You have your gray caps have empowered our children. Uh, through uh, your, uh, you know, GBR program, and uh, all of them still speak about those two young, wonderful trainers, Ravan Shetty and Divakar Pass. And uh, thank you so much for being with us. And I'm very sure, you know, that your topic also is something so wonderful. And we are all eagerly waiting to listen to you, and uh, you know, look forward for more and more great associations with you in the days to come. Thank you so much. On, the, on behalf of the entire DC family, we welcome you into our midst. Thank you, Ashana and Ravi, sir. Now, we will have our keynote speech and a question answer session followed by that. So participants, please keep your mics on mute unless prompted to do so, or you have a question after the session. Now we will start with the keynote speech by Mr. Giri Balasubramanian. Over to you, sir. Uh, does that make me audible? I have just unmuted. Yeah. Yes, sir. All right, great. Uh, thanks, Ravi. Thanks, Asha. Thanks to all of you at DC. Uh, it does feel like a journey back in time for me, certainly been there. Uh, these are places where sometimes you come and you visit a campus like this. Uh, you feel guilty to send a bill uh, because it feels like a holiday. Uh, it's such a wonderful sprawling campus uh, to all those of you who are just joining the DC family. Uh, and if you're gonna be part, especially of the Wagaman campus, uh, I always ask Ravi, how do your students manage to study here? Uh, I asked him the same question today. Uh, it baffles me. It truly baffles me for the kind of campus that you have, the environment that you have. Uh, that's one side and one way of looking at it. So my topic here today, and let me just see if I'm able to share my screen, uh, is a very pertinent one. And I'm just trying to do that. Give me a second. Yeah, I think I've managed to do that. Is that visible? If someone can just show me a thumbs up. Yeah. Yes, sir. Great. Uh, so the topic I have is, is extremely relevant to who you are. And before I even start speaking, let's continue with where you are part of, which is the DC family. And uh, Ravi just spoke of how in a state like Kerala, you've got just two proper fully residential campuses. 
and the other being I am Koikot. Uh, what do you need to really look at when I made that statement saying people like us feel so thrilled to come there is you are blessed to be studying in a location like that. Now, how do you make use of that? That's something that we need to talk about. The second thing is, why is today important to many of you, especially those of you who are joining or those of you who are part of this institute in the current era that you are in in this world? What are you doing when you're in college? How is it different? How is it even important? Why well, do people like me or Asashi Tharoor or anybody for that matter find the time to come and talk to you? Why do I need to do that? So rather than ask you, why are you attending it? Ask yourself an honest question. Why am I attending this? Why should I be spending one and a half hours with youngsters like you? Now, the reason for that is these really are the years when people form their characters. They form who they are to contribute to building a nation and develop the skills that can change this nation for the better. So why do people like us come and speak to you? It's because if we can churn out better people from our campuses, you're churning out more capable people to build a better future for this country. We completely acknowledge with absolute humility that we perhaps have a combination of a large amount of mess sometimes and some bits and pieces of good news for you as a country. We have so much work to do, therefore, so much change to bring in. Who's going to do that? It's you. It's your generation which needs to have a better India in a better world than what we experienced. And to do that, one has got to start looking at themselves starting from where you are today, which is at your campuses. So I describe the college journey, especially for those of you who are just entering college, you're out of class 12 or you're out of your graduation. This phase in your life is your golden opportunity that I call scripting U 2.0. 1.0 in most of our lives is the first 15 years or first 17 years that we spend at school. Now, once you're done with that first 16, 17 years, version two of you is when you're getting ready to enter the industry. And that is what you do post school. School prepares you for a college life. College life prepares you for a corporate life or an entrepreneurial journey or any of those as a combination. Now, many of us, and I'm being very honest, many of us love being successful. We love being famous. We love being well known. We love doing well. But very few of us architect that in a manner that the output is not an accidental output. And my talk today is not specific to any particular stream. It's about you. It's about human beings. So you could be a student of architecture. You could be a student of management. You could be a student of arts, commerce, whatever you are. It does not matter. Success is purely built about how you architect your being a 2.0 as you're going to enter the corporate world, which is the third version of your existence. So. My talk here today, and I'll take the questions later. I normally uh, am very okay with questions in between a talk, but in a digital medium, it does create a lot of mic distortion. So allow me to finish, and I will take a little more than probably half an hour and not longer than that with my talk. And then we could have a few questions that you could throw at me. Well, given my profession and the introduction that you had that I'm a quiz master, I promise you one thing I have no questions to ask today. So sit back very comfortably. You could rather ask me those questions. I'm not going to bother you with any of those questions of mine. Moving forward from the definition of what a U2.0 is, let's look at the world that we are all part of today. What is it? It can be defined by this new term called VUCA. It's not a term that came about courtesy COVID or anything like that. In fact, COVID could be a classic example to explain what VUCA is. The world today is in a combination experiencing four things. And whether you read 
a Ken Robinson, or you read a Yuval Noah Harari, or you read any of these thinkers, you're all speaking of these changes that the world is going through. The world is becoming far more volatile. The world is becoming increasingly uncertain. The world is becoming complex, and the world is becoming ambiguous. Every country has its own agenda. We sometimes do not see common ground. Data analytics does not necessarily get you beyond certain predictable elements. And if what is predictable is predictable, the predictable time frames are decreasing. So all the data analytics gives you is a small time frame of an advantage. And beyond that, it's again uncertain because everything is changing so fast. So in an extraordinarily fast changing or dynamic environment, how does one position himself or herself as a person? That is my proposition to you on how do you succeed in a volatile, uncertain, complex, and ambiguous world. It's not easy. It wasn't easy at all in a simple, defined, predictable world that I probably came from. In our days, when we passed out of an institute, you had precious options where you could do engineering or you could do medicine. Unfortunately, we still run that race in vast majority at schools, but only when you move forward from there, you start realizing, hey, there's so much more that I can do. So in a very predictable world, we found it difficult. You're gonna find it even more difficult because it's an unpredictable world. Everyone across the world today comes with the same set of advantages. In our days, the fewer ones who were well-informed and the fewer ones who were educated had a clear advantage over the others. Today, that's not true. Education is more vastly available. Information is easily accessible. Education is no longer necessarily formal like what you are part of. So everyone figures their own ways of getting educated, depending on the country and your affordability, which means the sheer number of challengers are far more. In my days, it was probably like a football match. We were 11 on one side, you got 11 on the other side, and you played a game. Suddenly, you're in a game where it's 11 million versus 11 million. You went to a football ground like that, and you got to score a goal. What are your odds? What are sure odds of a person like you in a world of 6 billion people to be successful? And to add to that, it's volatile, it's uncertain, complex, and ambiguous. But there must be a way, and there is. Otherwise, how are so many people being successful? So here's what I would call probably not necessarily the word that one uses often these days, but technically speaking, it's a good word or an expression that explains or underlines a point, which is a toolkit. So do you as an individual have a toolkit for success? So let's analyze that in my talk here today. So I'll define this as individual 2.0, which is your future. So what are you going to become in the future? Why you is my first question to you. Now, this is a question you're increasingly going to face in life as you move forward from here. Because people are going to pretty much come with the same kind of mix like you. The marks are more or less going to be the same. The kind of institutes you come from are going to be the same. The course that you do is the same. The university certificate that you carry could be the same. If all of that is the same, why should I choose you? Why shouldn't I choose someone else? It's a very important question for us to ask ourselves. Why me? It happens to me. It happens to you. It happens to everybody. What's my job? I'm a quiz master at the heart of it. So someone can turn around and say, what's the big deal? You ask questions. Anybody can do that. He can ask a question. You can ask a question. It's a bunch of questions. So why you? Why pick brain? Why can't I call anybody else? That is extremely important for you to answer. And in today's case, not when you become a brand or when you become a personality, but at every stage, starting from being a student, sometimes even to get an admission into a college. Today, one of the most complicated things is college admissions because everyone's got the same goddamn marks. You got 98, you got 99. How does someone say 98 is any less competent than 99? So it's very difficult. Marks only tell you, well, you've taken your academics reasonably seriously. It doesn't necessarily say whether you're going to be successful or not. The reverse. Does that mean all people who get 98 and 99 are successful in life? Certainly not. 
So why you becomes extraordinarily important for you to answer, including for your own self. You got to know why you are worthwhile. Otherwise, there's no point beyond the point. Here are a couple of things that I would advise you to do. What if you started looking at yourself when people say, why you as a brand? Does every brand in the world not tell you why you should use them? If I asked you today, and if it was a dialogue, and if I asked you, why do you use Google? You'll give me three reasons. You'll say, oh, it's easy to use. It throws enough results for me to choose from. And it's simple and fast. Now, Google did not give you an answer sheet. Google did not do a training program to tell you, hey, when someone asks you why Google, these are the three answers. But Google built itself as a brand for you to speak on behalf of Google to say why Google is useful to you. Why Facebook? You'll give me three reasons. Why WhatsApp? You'll give me 30 reasons. Now, no one's given you a prescription form for that. Can you close your eyes and ask yourselves, if you go to anybody else, including you probably, and say, why me, will you be able to answer that question? Can you find three reasons like you would give me for Google or like you would give me for anything else on why you, what defines you? From today, my dear young friends, I want you to start looking at yourself as a brand. What happens when you do that? Today, you are planning yourself for your future. You've taken a decision, either with the advice of your parents or your friends, or simply because you wanted to be at a resort environment for a few years, that you will join DC. But at the end of the day, DC is not only about providing you with a lot of oxygen and beautiful atmospheres. It prepares you for a world outside. And when people like Ravi speak and say with pride, we are the only other residential institute, it's a conscious call. They have decided to prepare people in a different manner than a lot of other institutes. That is the reason I'm here. That is the reason Asashi Tharoor comes here. That is the reason the institute looks at molding you beyond your academics. The easiest institute to run is to prepare students for examinations because you really don't have to do anything. You know your textbooks, you know your course curriculum, lecturers will come and speak and that's about it. But is that certificate really going to get you anywhere? That's the beauty with institutes like this. They prepare you to be a different person and not just prepare you to write an examination well. And if you are keen on that difference, then you will make use of it. I'm making a very honest, candid comment here today. Not everybody who's listening to me will really make use of this. They will just enjoy their college life. They'll figure out, they'll say, oh, TKR, these guys will come, they will talk, they will go. They'll do that. It does not mean they're not going to be successful. They may wake up sometime late in life, but the odds are they're going to be wasting more number of years of their life before they actually start doing something meaningful and successful. The people who actually start looking at themselves as brands from a very early age, start working on themselves, start working on what they're good at, are the ones who will eventually be successful or more successful in comparison to the others. My sincere advice, start young, start early, especially when you are at a fortunate place like this. Make the best use of it. Look at yourself and say, can I change this bloody world? Can I do well in this world where people turn around and look at me and ask me, hey, who's this guy? Who's this girl? Where are they from? If that is the kind of passion that drives you and you want to be someone in this world, start looking at yourself as a brand. Now, what do you do with that? Well, three questions that define you if you're a brand. Try and ask yourself that today over dinner. Who are you? It's the simplest question to ask a person. Who are you? Now, every interview asks this question to you in different forms. Either they say, who are you? Or they tell you, tell me something about yourself. Or they say, can you describe yourself in a few words? What do we do? We start speaking about what we have done with our lives. 
Oh, my name is Giri. I went to Baldwin Boys High School. I live in a family in Bangalore. I'm from Karnataka. Uh, my wife teached, uh, was teaching in a school. My kids go to this institute. I'm not interested in that. Who are you? Now, who are you is not what have you done. We often mistake who are you for chronology of my life. Oh, I am someone who loves traveling. Uh, I like playing chess. Thanks a lot. Why should I recruit you for that? If you are genuinely a brand, you're going to be answering in a manner that you're going to tell the other person, hey, these are the things that I do that could be useful to you. These are the ways in which I add value. I'm good at communication. I'm good at problem solving. I look at myself as a person who could be part of an organization where problems need to be solved. I love continuous learning. I like listening to you as an entrepreneur if that's the answer I hear. Ask yourselves an honest question. If the world says, and by the time you graduate from a school like DC, it's very possible. If the world says, I do not have the time to sit down and read your bio data. You people send too many things and everybody sends the same goddamn thing. You say, I play chess, I did swimming, I did basketball, I did volleyball. Make a 30 second commercial about yourself to sell yourself to me to get yourself a job. What do you say? Today, we buy foreign packages, we buy fridges, we buy air conditioners, we buy computers, we buy all sorts of things watching a 30 second commercial. What will your 30 second commercial about you be? Think about it tonight. Can you really introduce yourself in 30 seconds? That makes another person feel, oh, wow, this person's something different. Ask yourself, what's the value that you bring? Once you know that, you know why you are unique. Currently, and I'm being very fair and honest, you may not have the answer to that. No problem. That's the starting point. Now, starting point is how do I start making myself unique? What are the traits that define a brand? Brands are not born on day one. Brands are created over a period of time. That's your opportunity. From today, tell yourselves, I'm here to study and get a graduation or a post-graduation from DC. Second, I'm here to start establishing brand, whatever your name is. If you are Asha, your brand Asha. If you're Ravi, your brand Ravi. If you do not start looking at yourself as a brand, you will only be yet another certified professional in this country. There are a million others like you. I'm sorry, I'm gonna be extremely candid. There are a million others who are certified professionals like you, three years or four years from now and from across the world. So you're like one small, tiny drop in an ocean. Unless you really look at coming across as a different personality, if you're not gonna produce something that makes you unique and different, you're just gonna be somewhere out there in thin air. You do not want to be that. Nobody wants to. So you've got two objectives from today. One is your academic objective. Second, brand yourself. Look at this. All of us speak of startups. All of us say, oh, it's a brand, it's a startup. I want to be a startup. From today, think of yourself as a startup. You're starting a new part of your career. So what's going to be your 30 second? Next, let's assume you're going to do an elevator pitch. Five minutes. The brand is the same. You. I challenge you today. I mean it. I challenge you today. Can you talk for five minutes about yourself? in a manner that you don't get bored listening to it. It's a simple, simple proposition. Five minutes about yourself in a manner that you don't get bored listening to it. Now, think about it. I mean, if you're a young boy and you've got a lot of aspirations and you like impressing girls, if you can't introduce yourself in a manner that someone's going to be interested, God help you. You're going to spend many, many Valentine's Days alone. Or vice versa. Power of making an impression about yourself is critical whether you want to fall in love with someone or whether you want to get a job. Please understand, the world is always evaluating you. 
The world is always making a judgment, consciously or subconsciously. You walk into a room, three people see you, you haven't even opened your mouth, we framed an opinion about you. You can turn around and say, hey, that's not fair, I haven't even said anything, how do you judge me? Oh, of course I judge you. I judge you with the speed at which you walk, the way you walk, the way you stand. Body language is a judgment that I make. It happens. I walk onto a stage, 6,000 people are waiting there to watch a quiz competition. The confidence with us, which I walk pretty much tells them, oh, okay, the quiz master is here. If I'm going to walk in saying, hey, you know, hi guys, how are you? No one's going to be bothered to listen to me. What's the energy you bring to the table? What's the message that you bring to the table? What is the brand resonance that you bring when you are with people? All of that determines the altitude you will achieve as a personality. Please remember, all of us get our moments to succeed. And that's what I call your unicorn moment. The irony is, when those moments arrive for us to be successful, 99% of the people are not ready to face that moment. You're not prepared. And that is why people fail. It's not that they did not get the opportunity. It's just that when the opportunity presented itself, they were just not prepared to take or grab that opportunity. Don't allow that to happen. I mean, that's an apology to yourself. What if you killed a potential world beater yourself? Sad, right? You don't want to be your best competition. Certainly not. So, from today, please sit back for your own self for half an hour, one hour today. Ask yourself, 30 seconds, what are the things I would tell? Do I need to talk to four friends and find out, hey, what do you think of me, man? What would you introduce me as in 30 seconds? If you had to talk about me for five minutes, can you even talk? Ask your friends. You will know where you stand. You will and these are great starting points, friends. And... The first and most important step to brand building yourself is to get started. It is the most important thing, whether you're going to be an entrepreneur, whether you're going to be a student, whether you're going to be looking at your own life, get goddamn started. Most of us procrastinate. Okay, I'll do that tomorrow. Let me do it on another day. Let me find an auspicious day to get started. Nay, nay, not today, maybe later. I've got so many other things to do. That's human nature. But if you do not get started, and if you don't tell yourself, boy, I'm going to start now, you're not going to start at all. I have a line that I want to share with you, and it's something that came to me from Dr. Kalam, and we did a lot of work for him. And I had one scene, small little note that he had kept, and it was a fantastic note. It said, Today is the first day of the remaining part of my life. Today is the first day of the remaining part of my life. So, fine guys. I mean, you lived your life. You didn't do well probably, or you didn't do as well as you did. Past is past. You can't change it. Put your hands up and say, hey, yeah, man, I messed up. I didn't necessarily do as well if you did mess up. Don't carry the mess up forward resolve for yourself and say, from today, I'm going to be a different version of a person. It's possible. All you got to do is get started. You could lose a Wimbledon and then you're going to sit down and crib saying, oh, I lost Wimbledon. Roger Federer, when he was asked and said, you win many Wimbledons, but what do you do when you lose? He says, I start practicing for the next Wimbledon the next morning. That is Roger Federer. You don't bother that you lost the last evening. You start saying, next year, there's the next Wimbledon. I got to win that one. Learn to start moving and start moving forward. Make a resolve. It's your life. It's in your hands. This attitude that it will happen when it has to happen. It's a very common attitude that many of us carry. It brings with it negative energy. Please replace that with, I will make it happen. When you say that, it brings in positive energy. Trust me, friends, a very important ingredient for success is energy. Who controls the energy? You control your energy. You can choose to be lethargic, you can choose to be lazy, or you can choose to be positive and energized. It's in your hands. Second, 
We are today a generation where we are conditioned to chase results. I'm not for a moment saying results are not important. But sometimes in the process of trying to chase results, we overdo this fear of not wanting to fail. Results become, oh, don't fail, don't fail. Just get your results and get through. We tend to play safe. I have an advice for you. Please don't just chase results, chase knowledge. In every single thing you do, see what you can learn. I have a two word mantra, I call it fail forward, which means you take your risks, you might fail, you learn when you fail, then you succeed. And when you succeed, I have an even more important lesson to share with you. Please ask yourselves the same number of questions when you succeed as you did when you failed. As human beings, we ask ourselves so many questions when we fail. We spend so much of time with failure. Imagine you, were, you wrote an examination. Just imagine. You got 35 or 40. And I mean, there may be some who celebrate at those marks. I, I, I mean, I empathize. Uh, but if you got 35, 40, or you got 20, there's a gloom in your house. No one's talking to you. <clears throat> then someone comes and tells you, you know what, let's give this a thought. What went wrong? Why did this happen? Or your college team is playing a match. You lost the match. What do you do? You sit down and then you say, why did we lose? What went wrong? Did we bowl well? Did we bat well? Did we field well? Where the hell did we go wrong? Now, replace that with a situation. You got 99 on 100. What happens? Someone's bringing sweets. Someone's calling and congratulating you. You're like, hey, thanks, man. You're celebrating. Think of the reverse. You played a match. You won the match. Have you ever asked yourself in moments of victory, what did I do wrong? Victory is a toxic moment which makes you erase and forgive everything that went wrong. Because you then say, I won, right? It's okay, don't bother. So please understand, friends, success is very important to introspect with because that is what tells you what you do right. Why did you win? Because you did five things right. What are those five things? If you collectively agree that, oh, these are the five things that make me succeed and start working on that, the odds of you succeeding more number of time increases. So please, ladies and gentlemen, young friends, please, when you succeed, introspect. Don't do it only when you fail. That's knowledge. That is chasing knowledge even when you succeed. It's the very, in my opinion, it's one of the most important ingredients for people who succeed. Go back and look at great lives. Sachin Tendulkar, he knew what were the shots which got him runs. If you read Sachin Tendulkar's life, there was a time when he used to flick and he used to invariably get out caught at mid-wicket. He stopped playing that shot. He just removed it from his kitty. He had enough number of shots to score. He just stopped and his average grew because he knew what he was doing right and then stopped doing what he was doing wrong. That is chasing knowledge. Critical at your age to make this small little difference. Chasing results will only get you past small goalposts. It really won't get you past too long in life. This is a big cancer that all of us suffer from. It's a cancer called being nice to yourself. And all of us have this problem. Oh, I tried my best. It's okay. I gave it my best shot. It just breeds mediocrity, friends. You know honestly whether you had put in the effort or not. Consoling ourselves and applying medicines for our own failures is the bigger failure that we all embrace. Never ever do that. Challenge your limits. You don't know what can happen if you challenge your limits. Trust me. A simple example. COVID challenged our limits. It challenged your limits to survive. It challenged your limits to adapt. It questioned models that existed for decades. Colleges were still okay. They are still technologically way more than schools. Thousands and thousands of school teachers across the world learned PowerPoint for the first time last year in March. They didn't know PowerPoint. 
But from April and May, they were taking classes with PowerPoint. Why? The environment challenged their limits. But the moment they went there to make the attempt, it wasn't so difficult. Today, you actually go and attend a school meeting. It's brilliant. It's so innovative. And suddenly they just went on. They started bringing in animations. They did so many beautiful things to increase student engagement in classrooms and schools. All they did was challenge their limits. Do that. Never be satisfied with mediocre achievements and start wearing the crown on your own head and say, oh, I'm successful. I'm successful. Well, someone's going to come and remove that crown very, very quickly and you won't know what happened. Be your own challenger, friends, and keep challenging your limits. It's something that I would strongly advocate you to do. Next is very, very important. The whole world tells you to network. Yes, it's important. Network is who you know, and that's very important. For example, if you guys are so heavily on Facebook, you're on Twitter, you're on LinkedIn, please, you've crossed that stage in life where you're going to post saying eating pav bhaji, eating masal dosa. Please start using these social platforms to start networking with people. If you are a student of architecture, set a target and say, I would like to know 10 professional architects who can help me with my life before I pass out of DC. Set targets. Start building your network. My target to you people, and this may not necessarily be a very popular statement, but I believe in it. I keep telling Asha ma'am this and she does not listen to me on it. The best form of placements in a school or a college is not to have a placement division. If you can't place yourself, what are you going to go and sell Pepsi or Coke? I mean, ask yourself a fair question. Why should an institute place you? If you can't find yourself a job, boy, you're a failure. And if you can't find yourself a job, how are you going to go and sell soap or salt? You're not going to be able to do that. So please understand you're lucky that educational institutions provide you that starting pedestal. But again, ask yourself a very honest question. Is DCS Matt or DC Institute going to come and get you your second job? No, it's not. It'll get you your first job. Who's going to get you your second job? You. You got to be good enough to get yourself your second job. Who's going to get you your third job? What you did in your first and second job? So please understand honestly to yourself, you got to make yourself worthy to find yourself a job. Can I make a comment here today, which could be a goal for many of you. When you get to placements, can the job that DC Group gets you be your second option job? Can you set yourself a target and say, during my days at DC, I'm going to build my network where I should be able to place myself. Even if you're not able to get a final placement, place yourself for an internship. Internships can lead you to jobs. I, I want to share an experience with you, which is a DC experience. I had two wonderful boys from DC some years ago, uh, Anu and Arun, I still remember their names, who came here and did their internships with us. They, of course, had different aspirations. The time when they came and they did their internship, there was another young girl called Rashmi Futado. She was from NIT Suratkal. She did the internship along with them. I'm assuming the three of them are still friends. The internship that they did for the two of them gave them the confidence to go forward in life. They took their internship very seriously. Today, almost nine or ten years from that time that I'm talking to you about, the head of my content and research team is that same Rashmi Futado. She taught at NIT of Suratkal for a few years, left her job, wanted to be in education, joined us. She's also the world's only woman quiz host today. She transformed herself completely, and as many of you might know her actually. Little would you know that she did an internship with DC students at my uh, office. But the point is, they took their lives seriously when they were as old as you are. That's the important point. So build your network and build your net worth. 
What you do differently is what underlines your worthiness. And that is important. Finally, I'm going to give you a toolkit mantra on how do you create value. It comes from a very dear friend of mine. His name is Ramesh Jude Thomas. He's someone you should invite to speak. He runs a company called Equitor. And they have a model called the 3R model. It's called the value creator. It's called the restaurant recipe and reputation model. I'm going to ask you a simple question. Two startups both get a million dollars each. Okay. Two startups both get a million dollars each. Both are told to start a restaurant. So restaurant A, the owner says, I've got a million dollars. So let me find a swanky place. Uh, let me bring in the best music, the best interiors, the best infrastructure. Let me start this grand, beautiful hotel, which is going to be my status symbol. The other guy with a million dollars says, all right, I've got a million dollars. And let me go right across the world and open probably in the context of Kerala where I am. Can I open tattukadas everywhere? I, and I love eating at your tattukadas. Uh, can I open tattukadas all over the world as a branded offering? Now, he takes an alternative. But what does he do? He says, I've got a million dollars. I'm going to get the best cooks to provide food as those tattukadas. My food is going to be like no one else. My menu is not going to be available anywhere else. Now, ask yourself an honest question. Where are you likely to go over a period of time? Initially, you'll go to a swanky place. You'll say, oh, this looks nice. It's, it's beautiful. After that, if the food is not nice there because they've not invested in, if you heard me carefully, they did not invest in chefs. They invested in interiors. They invested in a building. They said, oh, anyone can cook food. But the guy with the tattikara said, boss, my menu has to be different. My food needs to be tasty. Then you really don't matter whether there is no roof over your head. As long as that food is tasty, you keep going back to that. What did he bring to the table? He did not bring you a restaurant. He brought you a recipe. The recipe defines who you are. Start building your recipe. Who you are defines your reputation on why people come to you. Please, students, start building your recipe and don't focus on the restaurant. The restaurant is important, but it doesn't take you beyond the point. Yes, you need to focus on being articulate. You need to focus on being groomed. You need to be focused on being presentable, but that does not substitute your recipe. What constitutes your recipe is your academics and what you can really build into what you're passionate about. If you're a student of architecture and in an interview at the end of your architecture course, if you're able to talk about architecture in a way that other people can't from other colleges, trust me, they're going to recruit only from your college. They'll be like, oh, wow, these kids here can talk from FLW to whoever. I mean, anything that you could think of in architecture, that's the spirit with which you need to build your recipe. Does it work? Is it just theory that we're talking about? Here is an example. Well, I've got four wonderful brands lined up in front of you. Apple, Uber, Airbnb. Do Apple make their phones? They don't. Who makes it? Some company in China or Taiwan. So what does Apple tell them? Apple gives them the specifications on what needs to be the manner in which an Apple phone needs to be made. Apple gives you the design. Apple gives you the GUI. Apple gives you the structure. Apple gives you the component specifications. You put it together and you give it back to me. I am Apple. What am I doing? I'm giving you the recipe, but I don't run the restaurant. Uber. How many cars do Uber own? A grand total of zero cars. But they're the world's largest car aggregator. How? It's pure recipe and reputation. Airbnb. How many rooms do they own as a hotel? Zero. But they're the world's largest hotel chain. Disney. Disney makes over 50 billion every year only by lending its name. Baijus is from your state. Disney Baijus. Baijus pays through their nose to Disney for using the name Disney. What does Disney give Baijus? They don't give them maths and science. They just give them their name. They give them their characters. 
just for leasing their brands, they make millions. That is a no restaurant world that you're part of. You got to build that. You got to build that and build that so strong that you don't need to run restaurants. You just need the recipe and the reputation. Fine. It works with brands. Does it work beyond? Does it work beyond that? Here is my next example. Talk to anybody anywhere in the world, conduct a quiz competition and tell them, can you name three Indians that you've heard of? <clears throat> Chances are one of these three will be told. A Mahatma Gandhi, a Mother Teresa, or an Abdul Kalam. Did any of them run enterprises? They did not. Did any of them have a recipe to offer you? Sure, they did. Gandhi's recipe was non-violence. Mother Teresa's recipe was compassion. Kalam's recipe was a vision for the future. All they offered you was a recipe. Millions followed them for the reputation that they generated out of it. They ran no restaurants. Please understand, build your recipe, build your reputation. You will be hugely successful. Well, these could be three odd Indians. Is there a better example? Look at this list. Nelson Mandela, Walt Disney, Abraham Lincoln, Steve Jobs, Michael Jackson. Well, did he bring you a recipe? Sure, he did. Sherlock Holmes, did he bring you a different recipe? Sure, he did. What is common to all of these people? A unique recipe, enormous reputation, therefore. Look at all of them. And what has it done to them? We remember them even after they are gone. Even today, go to anybody, a child in class three or a person in your college and finally your MBA, name one of the world's greatest entertainers, Charlie Chaplin will be one of the answers. How? How do these people leave an imprint in you that lives after they have gone? That is the power of the reputation they have built. Arguably, these are some of the world's best brands. Think about it. Think about it in another way. What would be the greatest brand India ever gave the world? Arguably, it could be a Mahatma Gandhi or a Mother Teresa. These are brands. Nobody sat down at DCS Matt and told them, these are the four P's of branding. This is the BCG matrix. This is how you got to position yourself. They just brought unique, unique recipes and they built their brand. Were they conscious of the brand they built? Trust me, they were. One of the shrewdest marketing minds in the world that you will find is Mahatma Gandhi. One of the most compassionate people who raised funds far more than any crowdfunding today could do was Mother Teresa. She was extraordinarily savvy. Could Kalam sway people? Well, from 7 to 70 people were following him. And in a youth survey, on who is the youth icon of India when he was 73 years old, he featured. He featured in a youth icon list at the age of 73 because school children said Abdul Kalam. Alongside him was Rahul Dravid and Sachin Tendulkar. Imagine. That's the power of a brand, my dear friends. Please remember, if you want really lofty goals, ask yourself, how will I be remembered after I am gone? And after I'm gone is not after you're dead and gone. It can even be after I have left a meeting room. I went to an interview. I am candidate number one. There are totally 20 candidates. The decision is going to be made by the panel after they meet the 20 candidates. What am I going to say that after meeting 20 people, they will remember me? That's your agenda. Otherwise, you're not going to get selected. I went and met a girl on Valentine's Day. 20 others stood in a queue. Roses were cheap to buy. How will I be remembered? Well, please understand, only when you are remembered, you are required. Otherwise, you just out there. Start doing things that make people remember you after you're gone. Please understand, brand value is what people speak about you in your absence. What people speak about you in your presence is feedback. That's not brand value. My brand value as a quiz master is what you speak about me after I have left that stage and gone. After you've switched off your television. And then you say, yeah, this guy asks good questions. Or you say he presents well. 
or you say, man, I promise you, I'm not going to see this guy again in my life. It's brand value. So set this self somewhere in your brains. After you're gone, how are people going to remember you, even if it's a meeting? Next. And finally, there are many, many people like us who read history. You should do that. It teaches you a lot when you read history. Alternatively, ask yourselves from today, can you create history? If you start looking at yourself to become a person who can be a brand in this world, if you start looking at yourself as a person who will leave something behind, where people remember you after you are gone, you are likely to create history and not just read history. Take your decisions in your life on which road you want to take. It's like Robert Frost's poem. Two roads will diverge in the woods. You got to choose which one to take. And your choices are now. Please think of entering DCS Matt as two roads diverging in the woods. I can enjoy the hospitality, the food, and the environment DCS gives me, and I can read history. Or I can take a road less traveled, put in the effort, come out of DC, where DC will remember me and feel proud to say, this boy passed out of DC. Imagine those two boys from your institute, and I meet thousands and thousands every year. I, I can't even remember the number of students I interact with. If I have to remember two students from your institute some eight years or nine years ago, they must have done something in their internship at my company for me to have that respect for them. And I'm using that word respect. And they were students. They were students of DCS Matt, which means what they did, the way they conducted themselves, made them remain in my mind. That's important. The moment I think of DC, I think of those two students. I spent maximum time with those two students in my office than I did when I came to your campus. So please remember and make the choice, create history. This is what happens when you become a brand. It's a line I'll never forget that Dr. Kalam gave all of us. Success is a very simple definition. It's when the same signature of yours becomes an autograph. What a line. What a simple line by a great man. Success is when your signature becomes an autograph. And look at the grandeur and success of this man. You're all adults. I'm going to make a statement here today, which is a very profound statement. We are a nation with a lot of differences. Caste differences, political differences, religious differences. And sometimes something in us, educated or uneducated, makes us judge people on these things. In retrospect, we feel, hey, I should not have done that. But when you do something phenomenal and great, you rise above that. Ask yourselves an honest question. Has this nation, which sometimes has a lot of lenses with which it sees people, ever described Kalam as a Muslim? We don't. When you think of a Dr. Kalam, irrespective of your faith or religion, you look at him with respect. Why? It's the manner in which he conducted himself and made India more important than any other agenda. That is what made him special. And he was a devout Muslim. He was an absolute devout Muslim. I have waited outside his room for a few minutes or so on occasions when he's doing his namaz. He was absolutely devout. But the point is the respect that one earns doesn't get clouded by our petty human differences. That is because the way you conduct yourself makes you someone who's an autograph in your life. On that note, my dear young friends, I'm more than available to be reached. I'm not someone who just preaches and just runs away after that. I commit myself to helping youngsters do better than we did as a generation. Bigbrain at graycaps.com is my email ID. I can take time to respond. Pardon me on that, but I, res I will respond. You can reach me, of course, on LinkedIn or you can reach me on Facebook. I mean, those are all my social platforms. I reply myself. But on that note, to a very good friend who I was meeting more often only at airports and not at his institute, to DC Ravi, to Asha ma'am, to whom I haven't figured out how I can say no. She never allows you to say no. And those of you who are entering DC Matt now, you'll learn that over the next three years. Well, she'll never get you to say no. 
could somehow persuade you and get you to say yes to what she wants you to do. It's truly wonderful. And I really want to use this moment and I won't take more than 10 seconds. Students, I want you to appreciate one thing as students. Is it even required for your institute to arrange such things and try and make you a better personality? It's not. DC is not a personality development program. You did not sign up for that. You signed up for a graduation degree or a post-graduation degree. So why should they do this for you? Why should someone as senior as Ravi DC attend a lecture like this? Why should people like me spend the time? We have a simple objective to produce a better generation. That's what your faculty here are for. Please remember that youngsters. That's the only reason they are here. And I'm making a very candid statement. They don't get five rupees extra as increments because you got five marks more. They don't get five rupees extra as increments because you got five rupees more in your campus placements. Please understand they are selfless people who only feel happy when you get that five marks more or five rupees more. If you understand that with humility, you will respect the effort that they are putting in to make you a better version of yourself. On that note, thank you for inviting me. Thank you. All right, Mr. friends, Giri. if anyone has questions, I'm more than delighted to answer them. An insightful lecture indeed. Thank you so much, Mr. Giri. And I am sure most of our students will be willing to work in the inner to brand themselves for future success. Thank you so much for that. And what a pleasure to have started our webinar series 2.0 with your U 2.0 lecture series. And thank you so much for that. And on that note, um, the forum is open for questions. Students, you can ask um, sir any questions that you have regarding the lecture or in general regarding your, you know, for future ahead like he has already mentioned in his lecture. Please go ahead. I'm uh, Professor James, KJ James. I've been following you from right from the quiz on the beach. I was in Daphne for three, four years. I attended your programs. Thank you for having branded yourself with a new quiz, thinking quiz, connecting quiz. That is the only quiz worth even now watching. Otherwise, it's stereotypical. It's very good that you kind of people come and give us lectures or tips or, you know, give some comprehensive, authentic advice or talk. I think these are really worth the best part of gold or any, any, any material that will remain with the students. Still, some more students have to attend. I think it's a it's it's a great thing. And on branding yourself, it's a very good uh, lecture for the students. Terrific. But I have a slightly philosophical, distorted idea of branding. Smirkonish, Michael Smirkonish, that radio host who comes in uh, CNN, political commentator, said that one year back, we apprentice. Trump colonized most of America with his hiring and firing. Xi Jinping, or even uh, Putin or Rasputin, or even our own uh, uh, peer would be very much into it. There is a very real danger of fake news branding. I think your quiz is, and your talk is especially different because it's genuine branding. It is a kind of uh, Kalam kind of branding. I think it would be nice if we really focus more on that. We are telling students, but we got to be aware about the deep danger of the polarizing branding, which is really a danger. The world of fake branding. So I, I wanted you to think also deeply into that. Sorry to butt in with this student group. I teach marketing here. Thanks, Prof. I think that's a very, very valid point. And uh, a lot of students actually ask me this. I have a simple view on this. You can create fake brands, you can create fake impressions, but they don't last. 
they don't last. I mean, take any example that you gave. I don't want to comment on present regimes, but for all the money power and all the marketing power, Trump did not last. So these things do not carry beyond the point. At the end of the day, whether it's the voter or the consumer, they look through these over a period of time. It's only authentic brands which last. It's only authentic leadership that really runs the course. And people know that. People know that and know that only too well. So beautiful point made by you. It's very important for today's students to pay a lot of attention to values because there's no point in being educated from some of the best universities in the world and then you commit a fraud and then you go into jail. What are you going to say? I'm going to, I'm going to say I'm the most educated guy in this jail. I mean, you know, that's an apology to oneself. So I think it's so true. The larger ambit of it is to carry the right values as you walk through life. So well said, sir. Thank you. And I still do quiz on the beach. I know that I saw the video oh, today. <laughs> I still do that. Yeah. All right. Do we have any other questions or? We're good on time. Asha, ma'am, if you have questions. Uh, you You're on you mute. Huh? Yeah. You're, yeah, now we, we can hear you. Yes, yes. Uh, it's always, it's always, uh, you know, today I could connect a lot with you because, you know, this is what I tell my, you know, children in... Uh, college wherever i go be a brand and also i tell them you are your own competitor you know because there's nobody you have to compete with and it seats you and also that you have to be your own brand like uh, you always i tell them is a values what matters you know and uh, you said a similar point which is mine is that you know run after i always tell them run after uh, knowledge and money will run after you. But uh, unfortunately, like James has said, children get carried away with so much of this money power. And, but I think people like us have to tell them, you know, uh, be grounded, be grounded. This is not the world is all about. And I'm very sure the children, even our senior children are also listening to you. So they may be thinking that did we discuss and say all this because of the same thing they are hearing now, you know, in college also. You know, it is um, it is so wonderful to have you giri with us and uh, you know uh, you know the friendship continues personally and institution wise i'm very sure about it thank you so much for my interns also i selected and gave you arun and uh, anu anu is in us arun also is in us and doing wonderful in life too thank you so much for that and uh, this time also i'll ask you <laughs> for some internships yes thank you and of course, our DCNs have won your ET economic time quiz. That also in Arun. And also the Tata Crucible. That boys have gone uh, to Taj and uh, everything. You know, we are, we are, we are. And I never missed your quiz also in, even after leaving DC. So, you know, it's amazing. And we will get back to that uh, uh, pattern soon, attending Tata Crucible. Thank you, Giri. Thanks, Asha, ma'am. Thank you so much. Look forward to your students for sure. Um, uh, Mr. Giri, it was indeed a uh, great speech from your side. I know it was uh, throwing lights on how uh, one has to move further and forward in the life. Uh, thinking about uh, one important aspect that you have mentioned, uh, uh, along with first, actually, you know, you said that you no know, taking the turns or maybe the deviations through the woods. So many times, you no, know, uh, the options can be go with your, go in the way of your brain or go in the way of your your heart, right? So basically, it's a question of decisions to be taken uh, when you are supposed to take a turn or a deviation. So how best you will uh, advise these students, you know, uh, how to arrive at a good decision? No, there is no equation like that, but uh, we can give some indications uh, you know, on the basis of what you should take a decision to go along with a particular typical route of your life 
probably you may be a failure, but no, you can say that no, you have done something and next deviation will come, you take the turn and go to the success route also. But there can be deviations several times in life, but whenever you are there to choose among the options, how uh, one should be taking uh, such kind of a decision based upon what, or maybe what are the parameters to be thought of when we think about taking decisions in life, rather not in management or some other organizational context, but in life rather. That's a very good uh, question, doctor. Uh, the normal advice that uh, I give students is especially as students, please try as many new things as you can when you're a student. Uh, I'm making a very candid observation and I'm honest in the interest of the students. Students waste a lot of their time. Uh, there's an enormous amount of time available to them to try so many things. I've seen so many students in our country because we tell them the academic framework requires you to do an internship in let's say the second semester or fourth semester, they will do it. You go to foreign countries like Singapore, as I mean, Asha ma'am was speaking about interns. I have interns today who apply for my com company from Singapore. I have interns who apply from foreign countries because they want exposure. These are not internships that are required in their academic framework. It is their own interest to learn new things. If you don't do that, you're not going to expose yourself to newer ideas. Only when you expose yourself do you know whether you like it or you don't like it. Now, let me give you the same example of three interns. One of them was this young girl called Rashmi who I spoke about. Had she not come to Grey Caps and taken that internship seriously, she wouldn't have known what Grey Caps is. And she wouldn't have been able to become the only woman quiz master in the world today. So it's extremely important to keep trying. Second thing is, you've got to be very honest to yourself at some stage in life. What is the biggest motivator for you? If money is the motivator, be honest about it. Fine. I want money. I want fancy cars. I want a lovely lifestyle. Then pursue it. Go about pursuing it. If you decide saying academic intelligence, growth of my mind, involvement of that, and a happy lifestyle is what is important to me, then figure that out. But you got to be honest to yourself. What is your driving force? As corporates, I always tell people, and they ask me, how do I find my passion? I tell them it's simple. If someone tells you over the weekend to do something and tells you, I'm not going to pay you for it. And if you're willing to do it and it wakes you up at five o'clock in the morning saying, hey, I want to do this. That's your calling. Dr. Kalam always made a statement. It's not the dreams that we get in our sleep that are important. It's the dreams that do not let you sleep that are important. That's your passion. It's your calling. Therefore, it doesn't let you sleep and you'll find it. The only thing is you've got to be pragmatic on what is your hobby and what is a possible profession. Because at the end of the day, it's got to bring bread to the table. You, you may be very good at music, but if you're not among the best where you can do concerts and earn money, then you've got to be realistic and say, fine, it's my passion. But don't let go of your passion because it still gives you happiness. Because the music gives you happiness, you're happy at work and you do better at work. So never let go because there is no money if you're passionate about something. Because at the end of the day, only when you're happy, you bring in positive energy. There's no point in being, you know, a grumpy person because people will run far away from you. But excellent question, Prof. As students, I think the more and more exposure they get to such programs, that will give them the perspective and the horizons to choose from. Thank you for the um, nice explanation to my. <laughs> Thank you. Are we done? Or have you got some more hands? Isha? Yes. Do we have any more questions? Oh. In that case, I think um, we'll move forward with the water tank. I invite Dr. Lakshmi B, Associate Professor D. Swissman Trivandrum, to deliver the water tank. Uh, good evening, all.
Respected Chief Facilitator, Sri Devi DC, Honorable Guest of the Day, Sri Giri Balasubramanya, my fellow colleagues and my dear students. It is my privilege to have been asked to propose a word of thanks in this occasion. On behalf of DCS Pat Fraternity, I extend my gratitude to the Chief Facilitator, Revisa, for giving us a platform and opportunity to interact with and listen to great speakers and personalities. So you have been with us in all our endeavors, guiding and leading us. Thank you for being with us, sir. Thank you. I extend my respect and gratefulness to the guest of the day, Sri Giri Balasubramaniam, founder and CEO, Grey Caps Knowledge Tribes. It's from your busy schedule. You have given us the time to spend uh, time with our students, sir. Your speech was really inspiring and motivating. It will definitely help our students script their future. Thank you very much, sir. I extend my sincere gratitude to all my colleagues. Since time does not permit, I'm not uh, taking all the names. Sorry for that. And my dear students, it is your presence made this event a successful one. Thank you once again to all. Thank you and good night. Thank you, Lakshman. Thank you all. Thank you so much. Thanks, Ravi. Thank all you. All the best to you all. Thank you I'll, so much. Uh, hopefully, see you after the COVID. Actually, after this. I know. Look forward. Look forward. Thank you so much. Asha, you could connect. I mean, Giri thank you, Asha, ma'am. This was it. Thank Asha, you, Giri. So Giri should be the first speaker. You know, so it's, it's... <laughs> thank you so much. Great. Thank you. That's it. Thank Thanks you. a lot. Thanks. Thanks, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. That's thank, it. thank you. Thank you. Let me just remind you, our next session will be on the fourth. Please. To join us on that day. Have a good evening.